So I was looking at the topics to cover for my Strange Gaming Stories series, which if you haven't seen it, there's a link to them up above. And I came across one of the most bizarrely popular creepy- Ice Is Iceberg Mario 64 the same thing? This one? pastas I've seen in recent memory. Every copy of Mario 64 is personalized. Now, the premise is simple enough. The belief that there is some sort of personalized AI that alters each individual's playthrough based on their decisions. Were you a mischievous miscreant that thought no one would know that you dropped the baby penguin off into the frosty abyss? I've never done that. Even the order that you obtained the castle stars in had a bearing on the game's overall outcome. It also explains the supposed disconnected feeling one would have from playing someone else's copy of Super Mario 64. It just wouldn't feel the same. Of course, this creepypasta is anything but real. Super Mario 64's code has been unraveled to the point of transparency, so any question as huh? to this mysterious artificial intelligence has been dispelled. But that didn't stop conspiracy what? theorists everywhere from jumping on the Super Mario 64 creepypasta bandwagon. Just by simply searching Super Mario 64 Iceberg into YouTube, you can find hour-long dissertations and dissections of similarly creepy compilations of odd, disturbing, or terrifying theories surrounding the N64 game. Why is there a negative emotional aura surrounding Wet Dry World? Have what? you ever seen the Wario apparition in your copy of the game? As with most of these iceberg conspiracies, our mind loves to wander and meander away from the straightforward and ponder on things with subjective what-if statements. The best part is that none of the theories can be proven, but our minds continue to produce them. But why Super Mario 64? The game isn't necessarily the game, how is the game creepy? nor was it intended to be a horror game. So how is it we can find ways <laughs> to the link fuck, these Jesus. disturbing creepypastas to such an innocent game? Well, perhaps it's because Super Mario 64 isn't actually as innocent as we remember. In what? today's video, we're exploring what about the Mario 3D classic makes it so unnerving to some people. So sit back, relax, as we uncover Super Mario 64's unsettling truth. Who's scary? It wasn't until a few months ago when I played the re-release on Switch that I started to think about some more of the things that unnerved me about Super Mario 64. The game looks very much like it did in 1996. For yes. better or for worse, Nintendo did absolutely nothing to spice it up. I've become older and wiser over the years and honestly a lot more aware of what totally freaks me out. And well, let's start at the top. As soon as you start Super Mario 64, you're greeted with a 3D Mario face that you can play around with. The reason for this minigame of sorts should be obvious. The Nintendo 64 was the company's first dive into three-dimensional graphics, and this existed as a way to showcase the impressive nature of the console. I can't think of any other game in Nintendo's long history that had this type of activity at the beginning of a game, and it really puts into perspective the importance of the upgrade to 3D. But. It also helps us understand another important aspect of Super Mario 64. The multiple limitations the team had when crafting the world our favorite plumber traversed through. Have you ever wondered why Toad suck. turns from transparent to solid Dude. when you approach him? How about the expressionless face of Mario? When I've only played this game from like a speedrunning perspective, when I watch people play it normally, I'm like, holy fuck, Or perhaps fuck, the slowdown experience when there are multiple corners I'm not even like a good speedrunner, but it's Mario still 64 like, Super Mario 64 cut a know. lot of corners when it came to 3D because, well, there simply didn't exist a perfect balance between cost and conceptualizing a proper 3D environment. Sure, if people wanted to pay $150 for a game, some of these limitations could have been eliminated, but because of this, there were sacrifices that had to be made during the creation of the game that, in retrospect, just made the game weird. But was that really the reason Super Mario 64 is so unsettling? Ew. Sacrifices in other 3D platformers like Banjo-Kazooie and Crash Bandicoot undoubtedly had to be made as well, but those games just don't have the same vibe. They don't creep me out when I play them today. There's something more about Super Mario 64 that just freaks people out. Have you ever been into a normal hustling and bustling type place at night? How about your school? 
your workplace, maybe even in the long hallway of your house, getting a drink of water at 3 a.m. with all the lights off? Did it just feel creepy to you? Well, you may have experienced what is known in the psychology world as a liminal space. Liminal space aesthetics relate to the unique and combined feeling of eeriness, nostalgia, and apprehension one gets when presented with such places outside their designed context. In Super Mario 64, none of the usual business is present, outside of maybe bob Battlefield or Womp's Fortress. Peach's Castle is a barren wasteland. When outside, there is absolutely no music or life, outside of some bird chirps and butterflies. Going well, inside, no your mind starts to play more tricks on you. Everything just feels so empty. And it lends a disturbing vibe that I just can't shake. A lot of Miyamoto's inspiration for video games came from his experience as a child, and it was once stated that Peach's Castle was no exception. The many floors, locked areas, and basement make it resonate with dreamlike appearances. Perhaps the most fascinating part about Peach's Castle is that by definition, it's not really a liminal space. It's an area we've honestly not explored before, but it feels off all the same. Like we expect things to feel one way, but they just don't. Think about the beginning of the game, for example. After you boot things up and select your file, you're greeted with a castle flyover and dramatic intro music. And then, silence. Examining your surroundings point to landscapes that are just out of reach. The washed out backgrounds are almost dreamlike, pointing to an Alice in Wonderland style aesthetic. Wait, what? I mean, there okay, aren't I'm even any direct now. walking paths to the castle. Why did Mario come out of a pipe at the beginning of the game? Is this uh, really even Peach's castle at all? Or just what? some of created by Bowser? Wait, the deeper we traverse into Peach's castle, the Wait, creepier what? it becomes. The haunting laugh of Bowser around every turn, the, haunting the multiple laugh. secret entrances and trap doors. It all feels very funhouse-like. And the paintings you jump into to enter each level, it's all very strange as well. Each area Wait, of exploration... I, th <laughs> I thought that this video was going to be like weird stuff hidden in a game or something like that but he's like actually this game is just a horror game the whole time same feeling of isolation <laughs> murky watercolors in the distance where you can almost make out what lies beneath but you can never really truly get there it's almost as if bowser designed each stage literally out of the painting and nothing more yeah, what's the what's the ice 